And there was Anna, surprised and happy that her boyfriend, Mariano, had proposed to her after two years of dating. Finally, he dared to ask her. She accepted, of course. But there was a big problem. They still didn't have a house. Actually, the woman was starting to get excited and think about how their home would be, no matter where. The main thing was being together, so they soon began the wedding preparations and, along with that, the search for a house. But the sale prices were too high. Perhaps they could rent a house, but Mariano suggested that Anna move in with him for a while at his mother's house. Anna didn't expect this. However, since she didn't want to live apart from him, she agreed as it would be temporary. And that's how Anna moved her things to the house of her future mother-in-law, Martina, who didn't oppose her entry into the house. Anna always tried to please. In the beginning, she was afraid of doing something wrong, but as the days passed, she adapted to her new environment. Days before the wedding, her parents came to town to visit and meet the future son-in-law and also the mother-in-law. Indeed, Mariano's mother welcomed them kindly. They laughed and talked all the time. The parents commented that their daughter was very lucky to have found a man like Mariano and such a caring mother-in-law. Anna was happy, until some work friends said that living with a mother-in-law was not easy, that the majority tends to have a big influence on relationships, often due to the feelings they have for their children. Anna pondered those words, and she knew Mariano meant everything to his mother. You see, Martina struggled for a long time to get pregnant and finally succeeded at the age of 42. Unfortunately, her husband died in an accident. So, she learned to be both a mother and a father to him. The wedding day finally arrived. Everyone was happy and had a beautiful celebration. But two months later, Anna was starting to worry. Her current husband never mentioned anything about moving or having plans to get a house. Unfortunately, there wasn't even space to talk about it because they both worked during the day and only saw each other at night. She would return home earlier than Mariano, and when they met at the dinner table, he wouldn't comment. His mother would arrive. Instead of having a calm conversation, she'd complain that her son didn't pay much attention to her and then go to the living room, turning on the TV at maximum volume, disturbing the couple when they tried to rest after a long day of work. Even weekends weren't pleasant days. When the couple had plans to go out, the mother-in-law would request they take her to church very early and pick her up from there. Then, she'd ask her son to accompany her for a checkup at the hospital in the afternoon due to her heart problems. Every Sunday was like that. And no matter how much mother and son argued, Mariano didn't want to separate from her. Anna was starting to worry because she was never alone with him. She decided it was time to address the issue. So, she called Mariano and arranged to meet him at a restaurant before going home. That's how they came together. Anna told him about her concerns. He said it was time to look for a place to live, and now both had better jobs and could get a good loan. But why? If we're doing fine? Mariano replied a little annoyed. Anna didn't expect this response. The guy said, you know very well I don't want to leave my mother alone. I can't abandon her. She's older and needs my support. I'm not asking you to leave your mother, reassured Anna. We can visit her from time to time. It's just time for you and me to have a married life. But we are married. Besides, you know perfectly well my mother's health condition, replied the man. Well, then let's find a house nearby and a sister when she needs something, the woman responded. And if something happens to her when no one is home? My mother doesn't even know how to use those phones we have. Anna was puzzled. I don't intend to leave my mother. I'm not like you who left your mother, of course. You know she's fine. At least she lives with her husband and your brother. But my mother... I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's go home. My mother must be worried. I'll buy some food for her. I feel bad knowing I'm eating, and she isn't, Mariano stated. That's how Anna felt and almost started to cry, preferring not to continue with the subject. Now, she turned out to be the villain in the story, but she still tried to handle things. Anna indeed cared about her mother-in-law's health. Maybe she could wait a little longer. So, she continued in her house. Days later, Mariano arrived with good news. He had been promoted at his job, 
and now had to travel for business. The downside was that he would spend more time away from home. Anna was beginning to forget that dream of having her own house, a place where she could see her children grow. As her husband was away for work, Anna, who had recently returned from vacation, would now spend more time with her mother-in-law. But it wasn't starting to be as pleasant. She had to do the household chores alone, and nobody helped. Even the elderly woman demanded to be taken to the hospital for tests but did so with a lot of authority. The girl was beginning to think that all the warnings from her friends were becoming a reality. When Mariano came home, his mother would smile and be friendly, but as soon as the son went to work, she became a different person. Sometimes, she'd shout and humiliate the daughter-in-law in every possible way. Anna couldn't believe her ears. One day, when she was chatting with the neighbor in front of the house, her mother-in-law approached and started yelling at her. You live in this house. You must do the housework. Leave everything clean and tidy. You must also cut the grass in the backyard. I'm not young enough to do that anymore. Besides, the bathrooms are dirty and my room is messy. Ashamed and saddened, the young woman cleaned, but her mother-in-law didn't relent. She found every possible imperfection to make the girl work more. And that's how the elderly woman acted when her son wasn't present. All day, she gave orders as if she weren't ill and didn't seem to be a woman nearing 70 years. And when her son arrived, she complained about all her illnesses and just wanted to rest. Anna was impressed by her mother-in-law's behavior and even had trouble sleeping due to stress. One day, while Anna was cooking fish soup, she served it to her mother-in-law, thinking she would like it. The mother-in-law threw the food on the floor. What did you think? Don't you know I'm allergic to fish? Do you want to see me dead? Once, before Mariano's arrival, Anna was preparing food. At that moment, the elderly woman approached and yelled horribly, how are you going to give this to my son? Only bean soup? Is this how you'll welcome him? This isn't good food. Moreover, it's too salty. The mother-in-law then told her that some fried potatoes and roasted chicken would be good. This is how you should feed your husband when he comes home from work. Woman. The elderly woman stood behind her, and I told you what to do. Come on, remove the potatoes. They're starting to burn. I'll go crazy with you. Handle the chicken well and don't overdo the salt. The young woman was removing the potatoes, sitting and waiting for the chicken to cook when, suddenly, the mother-in-law appeared again, there aren't enough vegetables for a salad. Go buy some. So, almost crying, Anna had to go to the store and bring the ingredients. She thought about telling her husband everything that was happening, but she knew he loved his mother and might not believe her. Plus, she didn't want to create discord between two people who were so important to him. It had made him unhappy once, and she didn't want to discuss the matter again. When her husband finally came home, he was greeted by his mother. The elderly woman quickly rushed to open the door for him. My son, come in. You must be tired. I made the food you like so much. That's how the three of them ate. But as always, Anna was the most affected. In fact, she remained silent the whole time. Anna wanted her holidays to end as it would solve the whole problem. The only thing that distracted her was going to work because it was a relief not to see her mother-in-law. Finally, she returned to work. Once, the young woman was eagerly awaiting an important business meeting. If everything went well, she would receive a good payment. The outfit was a point in her favor, so she bought a very special blouse, spent a good amount of money, but unfortunately, her plan would be affected. One morning, while her mother-in-law was having breakfast with her son, Anna, looking for her blouse, noticed a big hole in it. The woman couldn't believe it. Angry, she went to the kitchen to ask for an explanation. Sorry, dear, it was an accident, said the mother-in-law. Yesterday, I was ironing while making dinner and forgot to turn off the iron, Martina replied, caressing the young woman's hands. Thank goodness I noticed in time, otherwise, it would have set the whole house on fire, she said, looking at the girl with innocent eyes and smiled. Anna was really angry because she had never seen her mother-in-law ironing. She was about to cry, but her husband tried to calm her down. Let's go, dear, calm down. It was an accident. We'll buy another blouse for your meeting this weekend. 
And the young woman had no choice but to agree, and with that sadness, she went to work. On that day, she was late, and the boss reprimanded her. Some colleagues at work said Anna was behaving differently from before, so they decided to ask what was happening with her. And like that, in tears, she told them everything about her mother-in-law. A colleague shook his head, you've been too kind to put up with this until now. Anna didn't want to separate from her husband and asked for advice on what to do in such a situation. Of course, the experienced women started offering different opinions for the couple's happiness. One of them gave an idea, so Anna, desperate, didn't hesitate to do it. That's how the young woman came home early before Mariano arrived from work and invited her mother-in-law to have tea with her in the backyard of her house. The elderly woman was surprised. It was the first time they would drink tea alone with her daughter-in-law, but she agreed. So, Anna asked the lady before that to bring a box of cookies that she supposedly forgot in the hallway. And as soon as she left, the girl took out a bottle from her pocket. The elderly woman went to get the cookies, but an impulse made her look back, and the older woman was stunned by what she saw in her cup. The daughter-in-law had put some kind of powder. Upon returning, the mother-in-law pretended she hadn't seen anything. However, before sitting at the table, she let the cookies fall, simply asked her daughter-in-law to pick them up, and at that moment, the mother-in-law quickly switched the cups, and they drank tea slowly. Martina, watching her daughter-in-law closely, wondered what had been poured into her cup. She was speechless. Suddenly, a heavy rain began, and both went inside the house. Then, Anna drank all the tea. As a result, after a while, the girl began to complain, so she sat in the kitchen chair, rested her head on the table, and seemed to have fainted. The mother-in-law immediately shook her daughter-in-law and realized they were probably sleeping pills. Her son was about to arrive home. The elderly woman put water to cook some vegetables, leaving the pot lid closed. She looked at her daughter-in-law and breathed calmly, seeming to be sleeping soundly. Martina then went to the sofa and wondered why her daughter-in-law would act this way. Of course, she forgot that the stove was on. The water in the pot boiled, extinguishing the fire, and little by little, the gas dispersed throughout the room, going unnoticed by the woman who fell into a deep sleep. In the intensive care unit, Martina quickly opened her eyes, regained consciousness because she didn't breathe in more gas due to her son's arrival and his immediate action. Days later, the elderly woman recovered, but young Anna got worse. She had fallen asleep in the kitchen and inhaled a large amount of gas. Mariano was devastated. He could hardly sleep at night, kept telling his mother that he had a wonderful wife and wouldn't know what to do without her. The mother didn't tell her son about what happened between her and her daughter-in-law as he was very concerned about his wife. Later, Martina finally realized she had been unfair to her daughter-in-law, that her son was happy with her, and after what happened, she came to her senses. She prayed to God for her daughter-in-law to recover, for everything to be okay. After some time, Anna was moved to another hospital room, but she still hadn't regained consciousness. The mother and son took turns caring for the young woman. Everything was uncertain. Fifteen days passed, and fortunately, Anna opened her eyes and looked at her mother-in-law, confused. She didn't know what had happened. The last thing she remembered was the tea. Suddenly, she realized the foolishness she had committed, allowing herself to be carried away by a moment of anger. Look, she wanted to be alone with her husband for at least one night, so she tried to make her mother-in-law sleep, but it was really stupid because something would have happened to Martina too. Forgive me, Anna, she whispered softly, looking at her mother-in-law. The elderly woman burst into tears and began to hug and kiss her daughter-in-law. Forgive me, you may be a foolish elder, and both cried. A week later, the young woman fully recovered. Since then, everything improved between her and her mother-in-law. Even Martina insisted that the young couple live separately, but they decided to stay with her. Mariano never knew there were moments of conflict between his mother and his wife. The women never told him what had happened and decided to leave it all in the past for a better life. Since then, there have been no more problems.
Undoubtedly, a story that tells us the reality of many mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law. Unfortunately, husbands don't realize in many relationships, with children ending up because of this. I hope this video has been useful, and if so, don't forget to like, comment, and share. I invite you to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. A big hug and see you soon.